In a previous video, we saw how the system and channel models of the Kalman filter are set. We described how the unknown and unobservable process Y of n is described by the state model represented in this block diagram. Basically, the value of the sample of the process Y at time n depends only on the value of the process at the previous time instant Y of n minus 1, which is weighted by a sequence of coefficients that are known and deterministic, H of n here. And the result of this would be added with a white noise process Z of n. In addition, we saw that this unobservable process maps into the observable process X of n in a linear manner. Each of the samples of X is constructed by taking the corresponding sample of Y, weighting it with, again, a sequence of known and deterministic coefficients, in this case A of n, and then adding some observation noise W of n. In this video, instead, we will focus on the operation that the filter itself performs. We will see how the assumptions made in the system and channel model are exploited by the Kalman filter in order to compute recursive LMMSC estimates of the process Y based on the observation of the samples of the process X. If we have a closer look at the block diagram of the Kalman filter, the first thing that strikes our attention is that in addition to variables that we already knew from the signal and channel models, such as the observable process X of n and the deterministic unknown sequences A of n and H of n, we have a set of all other variables that we have not defined yet. These variables here, which are marked with a hat and are indexed by two time indices, are all linear minimum mean squared error estimates of the processes Y and X obtained at different times and using different number of observations. Let's see if we can clarify this notation. The first time index denotes which is the sample to which the estimate corresponds to. Therefore, this estimate here will correspond to an estimate of y at time n. The second time index denotes which is the last sample of x that was used to obtain this estimate. If we follow this, what we have here is that y hat of n bar n denotes the, est the LMMSC estimate of y at time n, given the observation of all samples of x from time 1 up to time n. Using this notation, we can now define all the different four estimates that we have in the block diagram. First, if we start from this bottom branch here, y hat of n minus 1 given n minus 1 is, if we are at current time step n, this would be the LMMSC estimate of y at the previous time, at time n minus 1, obtained from the observation of the samples of x up to time n minus 1. The second variable, which we have here, y hat of n bar n minus 1, this is the LMMSC estimate of y at time n, but obtained using only the observation of the samples of x up to time n minus 1, x1, x2, up to time x minus 1. You will see that many times we refer to this estimate at the one-step prediction of y. Why do we call it a prediction? Well, basically because this estimate can already be obtained at time n minus 1, given that we only use the samples of x received from time 1 up to time n minus 1. However, this is an estimate of y at time n. So we are predicting the behavior of the unknown process y at one time step n, given the observation of the observable process only until the previous time. Similarly, we have the estimate x hat of n bar n minus 1, which is the LMMSC of estima estimate of x of n, given the observation of all samples of x up to time n minus 1. We also call this estimate here the one-step prediction of the process x. So notice that based on all samples of x up to time n minus 1, 
we will predict the future value of the process x at time n. Finally, the last estimate that we have is y hat of n bar n, which is the output of the filter, if we are at time n, which is the LMMSC estimate of the unknown process y at time n, given the observation of all samples of x until that same time n. In a moment, we will discuss in detail each of the operations that is performed by the block diagram here. But before that, let's notice that the Kalman filter in this structure that is presented in the block diagram already has the structure that we are looking for. First, notice that the estimate of y at time n given all samples of x up to that time n is obtained by basically performing operations over two variables. One is the previous estimate of y at time n minus 1 given the observed samples of x up to time n minus 1 and the second variable is the newly obtained observation x of n. In addition, notice that all the operations that are performed are linear operations. We have two types of operations, multiplications with constants, like here with the sequence h of n, or here with the sequence a of n. We also have it here with another sequence that we have not yet defined, b of n. This, as we will see later, is the Kalman gain. And in addition to that, we simply have a subtraction and an addition. All of these are linear operations, so this structure here implements our objective of finding a recursive structure such that the estimate of the unknown process y at a given time, based on all observations received up to that time, is simply linear function of the estimate obtained at the previous time step and the newly obtained observation at time n. Let's now have a detailed look at each of the operations that is performed in the filter. We will start by looking at the operations performed in this lower branch. Assume that we are at time step n-1 and we have therefore obtained our estimate of y at that time n-1 based on all the samples of x that have been observed until then. Then, in this lower branch, we will actually perform the one-step prediction to obtain the prediction of y at time n based on only n-1 observations and the one-step prediction of x at time n. We can see the operations implemented by this block diagram described in equations here. Let's have a look at the first prediction step. The one-step prediction of y is simply obtained by taking the previous estimate of y at time n minus 1 and multiplying it with the coefficient h of n. Note that this is very similar to what we had assumed in the system model of the Kalman filter in which the value of the process y at time n was equal to the value of the process y at the previous time step n minus 1 multiplied by the coefficient h of n and with the addition of the system noise. In the prediction, we cannot predict what the value of the noise will be, but instead we can predict what our model allows us to. Similarly, the one-step prediction of x is obtained by simply using our one-step prediction of y and multiplying with the coefficient a of n. Again, this is very similar to the channel model, the only thing that is different is that we have estimates here instead of the true values of the process and we are lacking the observation noise which we again have no chance of predicting. The interesting thing is that both of these one-step predictions can be shown to be the LMMSC estimates of respectively y and x given the observation of the samples of x up to time n minus 1. In order to show this, we would need to show that the orthogonality principle holds for these two estimates. In addition to the estimates, we can also compute the mean squared error of the one-step prediction of y. This computation will be done also recursively, such that the one-step prediction mean squared error is obtained from the mean squared error of the estimate of y at time n-1, multiplied by the coefficient h of n squared. 
and with the addition of the variance of the driving noise process. As we will see now, the computation of the one-step prediction MSE is needed in order to set the Kalman gain in the update step. But let's discuss now the updating step of the Kalman filter, which is the operations that are performed in this upper branch of the diagram. As we have indicated in this equation here, the estimate of y at time n given the observation of all samples of x until time n is obtained by updating our one-step prediction with the expression that we have on the right-hand side. Let's have a look in the diagram. First thing that is important is that the new observation of the process x at time n comes into play now. The first thing we do is to subtract from the new observation x of n the one-step prediction that we had of that sample. What we have left, which is in the brackets here, is sometimes called the innovation at time n. We call it innovation because what the quantity inside brackets here represents is the new information brought by the observation x of n that we couldn't predict from the previous samples of x. This innovation part is weighted by the Kalman gain, which is computed as we show below here, and this weighted innovation is added to our one-step prediction to correct it and to transform it into the linear minimum mean squared error estimate of the process y at time n given the observation of all samples of x until time n. In order to show that this is indeed a linear minimum mean squared error estimate, we would again need to show that the orthogonality principle holds for this estimate. This only holds when the Kalman gain is defined as we have in this equation here. We can see that the Kalman gain at each time step n depends on the parameters of the channel model, so the known and deterministic sequence A of n, and the variance of the channel noise or observation noise sigma w squared at time n, and it depends as well on the one-step prediction mean squared error of y, which we had computed in the prediction step. Similarly as before, we can once more compute the MSE, this time of our estimate of y at time n given all observations of n. This is done once more recursively, and we can see that the mean squared error of the estimate of y at time n can be computed by updating the mean squared error of the one-step prediction of y at time n with a constant that depends on both the Kalman gain and the sequence A of n. Once more, it is important that we keep track of this MSE because at the next time step we will need to use it in order to compute the mean squared error of the one-step prediction. With this, we have described both the prediction and the updating steps and we almost have everything that we need in order to make the filter operate. The only thing that we're lacking now is the initialization conditions. So imagine that we are at time n equal to 1 and we want to start with the prediction steps for y and x and the computation of the MSE of the prediction of y. Well, then we would need to have estimates of the process y at time 0 given 0 observations. Obviously, since we have no observations, we have no LMMC estimate for this, but what we do is instead to set these initial estimates and their initial MSE to the mean and variance of the initial state of the process y that we had assumed in the system model. And with this, we have everything we need in order to implement and make a Kalman filter work. I would encourage you to go to the lecture notes of the course in which you will see the proofs that these three estimates are indeed linear minimum mean squared error estimates, and this is done by checking that the orthogonality principle is fulfilled by all of them, and you can also see the derivation of the two mean squared errors that we 
have here, the prediction mean squared error and the update mean squared error.